when you have a company like this with 70 years of history, you need to respect that history. Even if you like it or like it. I love always to say, play digital, think heritage. No, no, think heritage, play digital, because this is the point. Try to think who you are, respect it, but go to the next level. Mm -hmm. And I strongly believe that for an entrepreneur is quite impossible. Because for the entrepreneur that built from zero a story like this, you know, it's like <laughs> to change the DNA of yourself. It's, for me, it's quite impossible. Because mm. today you need to be a startupper in some way. I love the idea to my, to my team to tell, okay, okay, we have all this history, but try to be a startupper. If you are a startupper, how do you move it? So try to move with flexibility, with another timing on the market, Keeping, okay, heritage for me is factor and quality, factor and quality. We got our factory, 1,000, more than 1,000 pair of shoes every day by hands, made in Italy. This is a statement. If I can use technology and make it in 3D to anticipate the sales and reduce the waste, I love it. Mm. But then the shoes I'm going to make over there. You know, this is a simple example. Hello and welcome to Anatomy of a Leader show with me, Maria Vorostovsky. I'm the founder and CEO of HVO Search. Founders, CEOs, and lone HR directors hire me when they feel stuck and under pressure to hire the right senior leaders who will grow their companies. They work with me to ensure they don't hire the wrong person. I'm on a mission to discover what makes a great leader, the skills they have, what drives them, to really dissect what success looks like and what it takes to get to the very top. My aim is to bring to you leadership stories of entrepreneurs, founders, CEOs, investors, authors, leaders from all walks of life, the failures they faced, what they wish they knew before they started, and the hurdles they had to overcome. If you want to be inspired, surprised, and feel like you're not alone in your struggles towards the very top, you're in the right place here on Anatomy of a Leader. Like and comment below and subscribe to make sure you don't miss a single episode. It will change the way you think and may even change your life. In episode 10, I spoke with Ricardo Sciuto, CEO of the beautiful footwear brand Sergio Rossi, which was recently been acquired by Fosun Fashion Group, a Chinese conglomerate which also owns Lamba. Ricardo is a fascinating CEO who has managed to balance traditional shoemaker values with modernity by embracing technology and digital. We talked about how to act in a crisis, how to surround yourself with intrapreneurs, even in big organizations, and a secret source to making a heritage brand modern. We discussed audacity, making big moves as well as big mistakes, and the double job of securing investment whilst running a company. Ricardo is bold and unwavering. Well, listen to the full episode number 10 and discover it for yourself. Yes, what a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for, for joining us and for, yeah, it's nice to meet you because we haven't actually spoken, well, we've spoken, but we haven't actually seen each other face to face. And this is the for first long time. time. Long time. Yes, no, been we, made long once. Time. we made once. <laughs> I don't know, did we? Yeah, yeah, we made ones. Okay, all but right. And all my one, I mean, your face is well known. <laughs> <laughs> well, good to know. <laughs> Great. Well, as always, you know, on the show, we talk about leadership and what it means, the journey that you've been on. I mean, I know a little bit about you through the years that we have been speaking, but wanted to, de you know, kind of go a little bit deeper and to understand you a little bit better. So one question I always ask is, what does leadership mean to you? Hmm. Leadership is being a reference for your team, being a reference for the competitor, mm. <laughs> being, a, being, in case you know, leader also in the world. It means you, you need to lead the direction. And most in this time, so frustrating and so confusing. <laughs> I think everybody of us, they need a leader or they deserve a leader showing the way, showing the new wave of the company, of the life and whatever. So for me, it's trying to anticipate the vision of something that is going to happen in some way. 
Mm, so this for me is leader. And that it means then you don't only do, and I think I strongly believe not just to, okay, this is the way, bye-bye, get it. So leader should be getting the vision and trying to involve with the vision the people around you in order that they can join the, the trip with you. So I, mm. this is the vision that they got of trying to do. And how do you get there? How do you build this vision? And then how do you make that happen? The vision, I think, is coming from DNA, from sensibility of the people. Mm. This is not something that you can... This is of uh, giving you, okay, I have seen already once, usually should to happen like this, but you know, in the fashion system, every time is different. <laughs> yeah. So experience is helpful to keep the balance, to keep the quietness and to keep the, yeah, the balance is the right words. On the other side, you need to follow your belly, your heart, your mind, every, every religion, every point has some point of reference. Uh, your sensation, I strongly believe in my sensation that is, is improving during my experience. And if you keep the sensation, you try to uh, anticipate what's happening in the future. Yeah. I remind a fantastic uh, phrase of Mr. Ferrari, the founder of Ferrari. Then, okay, there is no lucky points. There is only the capability to anticipate all the possibility of the future. Mm. So then it means that, okay, you, if you're ready for everything, then they tell you, oh, why are you over there? You're, you're, you're lucky. No, I was ready to be also over there. You know, mm. so I believe that in the, in the system, in the work, you know, the, the train is coming for everybody. The problem is to be at the right timing at the right platform. Mm. If you're able to put indication to, okay, ringing the bell when it's coming to the station or whatever, you can be lucky to be at the right place at the right time. Absolutely. Yeah. You're talking about being ready for so many different possibilities. And especially now that we are going through this incredible crisis where we've been really shown that there is just, it's, everything is unpredictable. Like how do you prepare for all that many possibilities? I mean, it can be very overwhelming. I think the experience of the last one year and a half was on one side the best experience for your professional skill, yeah. also for your human skill. Yes. It's something that unfortunately we made it, so we, we didn't decide to do it, but <laughs> we joined it, we ride it. And I always try to find the positive vibe in every action happens. So this helped a lot me also the last one year because I was waiting something already in 2018 when you know the protests start in france they moved to hong kong my feeling was i don't know something is going to happen in terms of social mm -hmm. was social at the end of the story but was passing through the COVID. and i remind that it was middle of 2018 i told to my team let's be very careful something's going to happen because i think the life and the mood around is going to give you something Mm. Obviously, when in January China declared the COVID situation, we have store in China, we have people in China. I told the team will be the worst year forever. And I remind that January, February, many people say, "Yeah, but let's see what's happening." I was ready for the worst. Mm. I think if you're ready for the worst, <laughs> you can do everything. Mm. And so, help a lot me to keep the balance and to tell, okay. We can lose everything. And you know, when you are ready to lose everything, you are ready in terms of physical and mental and also in the company with the cash. Okay, let's ride it. Let's try to do the best and let's try to see the exit of the tunnel because this is a, a long, long tunnel. Then uh, I hope we are, let me see, a little bit more than the middle, but uh, we are over there. So we need to ride another, another, another piece of this. Mm. It's so tough mentally, isn't it, to be, you know, in that place where you're almost like you're ready to lose everything and, you know, everything is to play for as well. But to keep that momentum going for a prolonged period of time is is really tough. But it was also a surprise for me, a positive surprise of myself, because in this situation, you can really discover, you know, in the difficult, tough moment, you discover how much you can do it, how much you can resist it, how much you can be flexible, 
seem relaxed even if inside you you have like a <laughs> like a big fire so it, it, what you're really made of yeah <laughs> Like, yeah, it's really testing times. I tell you that. Yeah. I mean, that's something that I've myself experienced. And I, yeah. and I liked what you said about when it, during these times, you also learn about humanity as well and how you handle yeah. that and how other people are around you and, you know, how, how you deal with it. And I think, you know, from, from the conversations that I'm having, there's been such a huge focus for many people. And also when you haven't been treated in the way that you really needed to be treated how how the repercussions of that on companies and on individuals and on you know performance productivity and all of that um but i'd like to go back a little bit to your journey and experience and obviously you're you're the ceo of an amazing beautiful footwear brand Sergio Rossi and how did you end up in fashion how did that happen yeah i started <laughs> from my grand grandmother because uh, mm. my grandmother, just after the war, she opened a fashion store in the north part of Italy. Right. So she started the, <laughs> the story. Mm -hmm. And then my mother, uh, she started with the idea, I don't want to work in fashion, but she moved on the fashion. She met my father working in the fashion, and then I come. <laughs> and when I started during my degree in economics, my, you know, I started living, they used to produce apparel, so they used to be in the retail system. And when I, I came, I was already from 12 already, was coming some days with my father in the factory, in the offices. So you, you keep, you have in your blood and you get in your hair. And when I started to study economics, I decided to also work in the store of my, of my, uh, of my father and my mother. Uh, that used to be the franchising of Max & Co., of Max Mara Group, one of mm. the first in Italy, it was amazing. I deserve to everybody to make experience in the store because in the store you can feel it, the exigence of the customer and see what's happening at the end of the process, not just mm -hmm. from the design, but at the last stage that is the crucial point today. Uh, then I used to work with them very often in the buying team, also in home collection, home collection, not only upper collection. And then uh, after this, my father was waiting for me to manage the store in the business. And I decided to go to make a stage in Gruppo Finanziario Tessere, GFT at the stage, amazing, with Valentino, Armani, uh, Ungaro, all the main brands. Was the right decision because, you know, I believe that, okay, working with my parents was fantastic in terms of feeling, okay, it's your house, your home, but I don't like the feeling where you know everything. Mm. I'm, I'm, I prefer to be to find challenging situation where you go out, you prove yourself. I come to Milano uh, with my father and okay, I not give you any money, it's your job, bye-bye. My oh, grandmother yeah. used to help me, so it was a good point. <laughs> and the good point was then with GFT was a fantastic uh, experience. Uh, I made also the big uh, experience with Calvin Klein collection in GFT when they started to distribute in Europe and Asia. Uh, and then after this, I went to work for Calvin Klein directly for them. And then jewelry was a fantastic experience with Pomelat and Dodo. Mm -hmm. uh, was a, a niche brand, uh, distribute most on the wholesale. We, we push all our energy with all the team to become an international brand, um, uh, pushing the sales, the distribution, and keeping the heritage at the factory was fantastic. Then Mr. De La Valle, Diego, called me. You need to come to work with me. I made also the entrepreneur experience. Uh, it was very similar to work with my father. So it was very positive thing for both because we tried to keep, like, them see the distance and the respect of the entrepreneur, but trying to give, as I'm, I'm always doing, the reality of what is the opportunity and the risk of the time we make a choice. Because mm. uh, I think the, the I think the mission of the manager when you have an entrepreneur and I made a lesson with my father so I know very well is okay giving the vision getting the next stage but trying to preserve what they built it before not destroying but trying to fix it and going to the next level mm. that is the peculiarity of the Italian entrepreneur they are genius they made a fantastic history in the last year. But with the world moving so fast and so in a different direction, they should have somebody on the side uh, trying to understand them and respecting them, but helping them to go to the next level.
Mm. And then five years ago, Mr. Bonomi invested Dasta called me. He told me, okay, we bought uh, Sergio Rossi. And you know, for me, it was like to close the circle, to become an entrepreneur with the fund and to, to, to remain a manager and, and was a fantastic, uh, amazing point. And, and now we're doing the second step in Sergio's because we are selling now, uh, we have sold, but now it's going to be official the next few days to Fuzun. Uh, so to the Chinese agglomerate. So it's another experience. I'm going to remain uh, as a CEO, as a also shareholder. So it's another step in the step. Uh, mm. <laughs> shoes in, feel, my, in my mind. <laughs> you must feel very proud of that. I mean, it's a it's a journey, and to kind of take it to the step must be I'm proud very exciting. The recognition. Yeah, exciting because we are going to change the the mental approach and for me is always interesting to get another point of view uh, you know china market for us is one of the first countries so it's one of the first regions so having somebody coming from this region is going to help us to be much more uh, strong in that region but at the meantime you know uh, the world uh, uh, is changing the point of view and I think if I can keep the heritage and the historical quality of Sergio on one side, but moving in the next level, let's try to do it with the positive vibe. What do you think is the secret? I mean, we, when we're talking about kind of heritage brands and, you know, have such rich history and, you know, have seen so, you know, the customer moves on as well, but you've got this, you know, all the story. So what's the secret sauce to taking such a brand and make, and keeping it still modern and relevant? I think the first step that I made it when I arrived is try before to understand what is the brand, what is the heritage? Because too many situations, you try not to see what was before. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have a company like this with 70 years of history, you need to respect that history. Even if you like it or like it, it's not to be like, okay, I like it. Who takes care? It's much more a point of view. It's like, okay, let me understand from the history what I am, what I was able to do, my limit also, because you can discover your limit, your plus and your minus. But at the same time, you need to try to use today is it's more easy in one way. You have technology. Technology can give you the opportunity to express the heritage on one side and putting speedily and quickly to the final customer. I love always to say, play digital, think heritage. No, think heritage, play digital, because this is the point. Try to think who you are, respect it, but go to the next level. Mm -hmm. And I strongly believe that for an entrepreneur, is quite impossible because for the entrepreneur that built from zero a story like this you know it's like <laughs> to change the dna of yourself is for me it's quite impossible because mm. today you need to be a startup in some way i love the idea to my to my team to tell okay okay we have all this history but try to be a startup if you are a startup how do you move it so try to move with flexibility with another timing on the market, keeping, okay, heritage for me is factor and quality, factor and quality. We got our factory, 1, 000, more than 1,000 pair of shoes every day by hands, made in Italy. This is a statement. If I can use technology and making 3D to anticipate the sales and reduce the waste, I love it. Mm -hmm. But then the shoes I'm going to make over there. You know, this is a simple example. Yeah, I mean, just understanding, you know, being sensitive to the story and what really is the DNA of the brand, as you say, but then, you know, what are the technologies and your new ways of enhancing that? Or, you know, what are the elements that are not necessary that or can be in, improved? And, you know, it's it's not technology for technology's sake. Yeah. It's like, how does it fit in? I mean, we kind of talk about that a lot. And... Um, yeah, so I mean that's that's kind of fascinating about you know all of these you know incredible people and the brands that you have worked with, and you know what has been what's been the biggest challenge for you? You know what's been like the hardest thing for you being a CEO entrepreneur? What is that? I think all the time, um, I'm I'm always feeling 
like my company. This is my limit and my plus. Mm. <laughs> and all my family is telling me, okay, when you work in a company, you feel like your company, even if you don't touch your orders. But I means for me is is a state of mind. If I need to ride an experience, for me oh, is one hundred percent or there is no season. Mm -hmm. And for me, this is giving me also during the last one year and a half the possibility to never stop, to go to the next level. I think passion and passionate people today and is coming very out is making the difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, you need to have experience, but experience capabilities for me is like, okay, it's the ABC, like the wheel on the car. You need to have it. But the next level is how many passion and how you are also human on one side that we told before. I love humanity. It means I'm a style of manager that I can be very straight, but I prefer the people that they put the passion and the energy of what they can do is much better than the people that they have 100% of capability, they use only 30% just mm. to save energy time. No, no. I prefer the 20% capability person that they give 25. Mm. I love them. Because mm -hmm. I know that they are doing all themselves. And so it means that they are going to be very respectful of the work they do, of the colleague and everything. It's natural. If mm. you do everything, you are expecting to receive everything. If you do half, it's like in a relationship. It's the same. <laughs> then mm. you, you can like more the people that give you less because there is like the opposite is going up and down but in the work in the in the passion of the work and the job if i need trust people and i need this way of, of working so i'm trying to give them also we need to be frank most in this time less bullshit it means it's the momentum of tell the truth nice or not nice is mm. the point i think you can reach the goal much easier because you can have people tell you, no, I don't want to do, okay, but I know. <laughs> then, okay, let's see, let's see. No, there is nothing to see. Let's do. This mm. is the moment to think, do, make mistake, understand, and to be very, also, let me see, um, realistic on yourself. We are mm. human. I totally believe that every day do one mistake. Not well, that's more. the mind of a, when you're talking about mindset of an entrepreneur is the idea that, okay, we're going to try it. It might not work. I might not even like it or I don't want to do it. And it's very, it's, it's actually really hard to be completely honest, even with yourself about the things that you don't like, but also having that, you know, ability to say to someone else, actually, it's not working or I've done this and it didn't work out. You know, how do you, how do you ensure that you do surround yourself with people like that? Nah, you know, you need to be the front man with them. So you need to show them that also we do mistake. You know, I think today the big goal is doing many things very quick, trying to do less mistake as possible. Mm -hmm. Much better because if you go to the formula of 10 years ago was, okay, business plan, five years, nothing is going to move. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like the rolling ball, slowly, slowly. So before you understand that you made a mistake uh, after two years. Mm -hmm. Now you can understand your mistake with an Instagram post. If you do it the wrong way, <laughs> you can receive a feedback after one minute. Yeah. So also the system has changed. So you need to, mm -hmm. in some way, do it. I'm trying to do with my people during the meeting, following them, let's try. But you need to try and measure. The, some mistake that every day the people they do is they do it, the measurement process is always approximately. So, mm -hmm. okay, it works. Yes, my friends tell me it's okay. No, no, your friends is your friends. Give me the ratio before now. In fact, every project, okay, I like the project I don't like, but you believe it, let's do it. If you do great, what is the measure that is telling me that you do great? Okay, put me on the paper. If you don't know great, then after one week you measure, okay, it was great, well done. And I think if you do in this way that is very entrepreneur, they get confident. They mm -hmm. get confident that can they try. For me, the people, they have more opportunity to express today than before. You know, before, in a, in a, in a low, very slow rolling ball, changing points was very, quite impossible. Now, mm -hmm. every day you can try. How much it costs? How much is the goal to get it back? Okay, let's try. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work? No. If it works, you can do three times more. Mm -hmm. So they have also their capability, and this is the reason we need these people, because if they like to be entrepreneur of themselves, 
they can create like a circle of good activities, good invention, you know, and that can help the company to grow much better and in a better direction. Mm. You're so right. The speed at which things are happening and the information that you have is just so much faster and it's getting faster and faster. And it's about testing and, as you said, but making sure that you measure that. And then if it's working, then you can kind of pursue that direction in a much more aggressive way. Um, and that's a... You, you know, know, we saw before, it's, it's a startupper mind, mindset. Yeah, yeah. Startupper, they start from zero. They don't have anything, so everything is new. They need yeah. to try to put the first block of the house and try to understand <laughs> how it's going to work. Mm. I think... I think the mindset of an entrepreneur is that you know that you don't know everything because you haven't been there or you've not done it and it maybe didn't even exist before. So the mindset is already that you know that you don't know and how do you yeah. and how do you make sure that you how do you make sure that you figure things out and um, and test things? I mean talking about mistakes, what's the biggest mistake you've made? <laughs> Big, big, big. <laughs> I don't know, mm. but you know, mistakes. Be honest are... here as well. <laughs> no, but let me see. I think sometimes, um, you know, also being, I was in some situation very respectful of the owner and the entrepreneur of the found that sometimes I was not immediately against some idea that I was already feeling was not right. Mm -hmm. so I'm, you know, in this way I'm, 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 I'm a good person it means I'm trying to listen to other people and if they want to get some idea I'm trying to understand why they get it so but sometimes if you follow some idea that is not right you can make big mistakes mm. but this is, is my default okay they made a bad suggestion who take care of but if you follow is your mistake mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm I'm trying I'm uh, I think it's, it was a good lesson to understand that, okay, listen, everybody, but if you are not sure, don't do it. Mm. Most today. Mm. I mean, today you need to do something then, even if in terms of big investment, if you have some big doubts, don't, even if who is telling you to do is the owner of the rest, try it. If you are not sure, try to double check in this case. Because mm. it's not a mistake can be very, very huge. Mm. But, yeah, you know, that's the... yeah it's the opposite of that they told before so when it's coming from your side do it is your mistake 100 percent. when it's coming from outside or from an external be aware try to understand their point of view that can be right but can be not apply to your experience your company mm. Mm. that's so true and um and especially when you're in a position where you've got either external advisors or maybe even shareholders and lots of people giving you so many ideas and saying this is the way to do things yeah but as a you know as a leader of the business it's up to you to make those decisions yeah because it's not the, the if you do the the mistake is your mistake <laughs> yeah you know at the end of the story there is no possibility mm. so Thinking back now, I mean, this is a question I love asking. It's like, if you had known it then, what would have saved you a lot of hassle now? What is that one thing? To tell to the people? <laughs> no, for yourself. So, you know, if something, if you had known back, you know, when you were first starting out and, oh, you know, yeah. making mistakes, like if you had known it then, what would have saved you a lot of hassle now? What I will tell to myself is, okay, don't be shy because I think that to be, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm using a lot in, I tell you in Italian that I love the words, also in English, but uh, audace, to, uh, to essere audace, you know, audacity. Mm. I think today who is going to win and you see the story of all the big inventor. How You know, um, audacity is something much more than to be, to let me see, to be strong and whatever. Because audacity gives you one possibility. Mm. You know that you can make a mistake. You go, you fight. But if you take, let me see, a knock on your face, mm. you have to have the audacity to stand up again 
and fight much stronger than before. Mm. So for me, audacity is never stop. If you believe in something, go ahead. Mm. Be and find your time to stop sometimes and tell to yourself, okay, I'm not on the wrong way, because if you're on the wrong way and be audacity will be a big disaster, but who takes care? If you get in the right points, it's a fantastic experience. And when, you know, during this COVID, I think every company has now one big problem. You have half of the people, I'm trying to tell half, for me is, is a different balance, but let's see half. Half of the people get afraid on the corner, stuck, like to tell, I don't know anything of the situation. I don't want to move. I want to stay fixed in my house, whatever. And let's wait then the wind and the thunderstorm is passing. Then when the other is going out, I will be the last one to go out. Yeah. Safety. You have a safety. You have people in the middle that become, unfortunately, safety 100%. Mm. On the other side, I discover during the lockdown, the smart working or smart holiday, depends on the point of view. I discover then you have people on the other side and they they show the audacity that they love it. They become suddenly, also with a good surprise for the company and for me, to be stronger than what they show when they used to be in the office. Mm. And now the points for the company and the challenge is, okay, now we are, we are coming back to work all the day, so it's a good momentum. And I love that every people, they come to work because you need to rebuild the spirit. It means I love technology, but you know, I think sometimes, and I feel also for myself, mm -hmm. working in the office, this morning I have an important meeting, I, I could do by phone at home, I come to the office to do. It's like there is also a mentality that is giving you like, you know, when you go to do a race, you go to the Grand Prix to do a race. Okay, you can do also virtuality, but the race of the Grand Prix is another way. Mm. So you see now the, the opportunity of the company is how we can use these audacity people with more responsibility is a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's only people who show my, now they get more responsibility than before the company. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, how we can get, let me see, the lost people and afraid people, they are really lost somebody. Eh? So mm -hmm. over there, you need to use humanity because you need to re-fire <laughs> everything inside them with the help of the other. And the only way to do it is take him back in the office. It's not how they can, with those mozi, take back this energy. Mm. In, the, in the room, close 24 hours? I don't think so. With the Zoom only, it's not so easy. Yeah. So are you, are you the, the, the person who says everyone needs to be back in the office? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. With safety, giving them possibility to use the private car and get in the post, whatever I can help them. But on the other side, if they get vaccinated. Also, I love the idea. If you go out for dinner in the middle of the city, why you don't come to the office? I think you risk much less in the office. Most of them, now they get the office by two with the separation and everything, so, or by, mm -hmm. by themselves. I think there is much less in the office than in the restaurant. And I love to go to the restaurant. Huh? No, I mean, <laughs> I think it's logical. Uh, but also, I think it's strong for themselves, for the family, on the humanity point of view. I got people, that, you know, they use their life is 90%, 80% the office. I can imagine them staying out from the office for many weeks, many months. Mm -hmm. In terms of psychological, it is it, it, something that we need as a community, as company, to help. So we need to give them, let's come. If you want to come, let's come. Let's find a way in terms of safety, vaccine, and everything to be protected. Absolutely. But it is another basic that we started mm -hmm. from last year to do it. Mm -hmm. So the point is, how I can give you the best instrument to be safe, but to work and stay with the people. Mm -hmm. Have a lunch together. Uh, you know, also there is this timing of the people working, then somebody is not following. But, uh, you know, sometimes in front of the coffee machine, you can solve more problems than in the meeting. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, well, we all get very fixated on the way we do things at home because, you know, you're also at the mercy of your own energy level. So if you don't have anyone around you or you have 
other people who are kind of you're absorbing the energies from and if you are in a productive space where you feel energized you know things are moving you know it automatically lifts your spirits so for me that's the kind of the purpose of the office i mean what what's your view on that what's the purpose of the office now well, no i believe 100% with you we are human we have energy yeah so we can move energy now with the voice and the sound of the voice and looking but you know you're using two two sense on on the other mm-hmm. you don't have the smell you don't have the vibration you don't get the rest so being together is this opportunity that is the same story of the retail offline online and on the channel it means mm-hmm. it depends i think everything we need so uh, the the truth is that there is no more the reality than before we get an acceleration in when you now like 10 years on some in some situation mm-hmm. but now we need to get back to what we are human human is human connection mm. that can be sometimes through video but sometimes through face sometimes staying together i see also yes a, a important meeting with the supplier if you see the mail was like fighting we saw each other we solve everything in 5 minutes because mm-hmm. also now through email and through distance we are becoming like okay ta, 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 i did it i did it yeah but okay be aware humanity of how are you your family what's happening you start in another level yeah and you and also you you okay try coffee to, i know that on some way you are losing time of efficiency because mm-hmm. i remind when i was in the in the lockdown was like one zoom every other i mean you 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 work 10 times more some but on the other side you don't have the time to understand to make reflection to think about the people you become a little bit too machine yeah that is yeah. amazing because was the only possibility but i think like in everything the balance is the points so let's find them in the new balance where the physicality we need to face back i mean it's something that we need to feel it mm. i think you're right mm-hmm. about using technology i think we're getting to the stage where you know things are moving so quickly and everything is accessible that we're beginning to see the relationships and the conversations as transactional and you know that's that's fine to a certain point but you know when you we're really dealing with people and we're humans and we go through you know there's certain things that bother us and happen to us and we're affected and influenced by that so when you can meet a person at their level and really listen to what they're saying and i was having a conversation with mark goulston who is a coach psychiatrist and he wrote a book called just listen which is what i talked about in the previous um episode and it's just incredible to shift the focus away from like what's your agenda and trying to understand the other person i think we're losing that a little bit with with the way we use technology and you're right you know sometimes we we have to lose a little bit of time but what you gain in that is something completely different and you know the the connection the feeling and actually in the long term it works out much better so but also because we need to remind them the details are making the difference and yes. the problem of sometimes of all the technology that they allow is that mm. you lose some details but the details yeah. make the difference and when you are close physically some details is coming out mm. how you move your eyes how you move your hands everything mm. no absolutely and it's coming from a person who you know from 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 brands where the detail is really what makes yeah. the brand as well and yeah. let's let's talk about investment and you know what's the hardest thing about you know funding and looking for investment or you know getting investors on board i mean obviously having gone through this process now yeah talk talk us through it it was amazing in terms of experience because when you have many investors coming to analyze the company and you are selling the company and in this case also trying to buy the company so it was like the mm-hmm. double on the double side mm-hmm. the point is of it was was also important for myself in terms of the business state you made in the last years so Sorry, sometimes it's also useful to go in this process but not just that it was also important for me to to understand the mistake that i made in the last period because mm. you need to show the company what you made it and 
you know, expressing to many, many people all the time, you, okay, I, I made this choice, but Perez was much better making the other one. So what was important is, is give you the possibility to analyze your process, you made it, but on the other side, try to understand if you can do again, how you will do again. In terms of financial, eh, was like a show because you have people from many points of view coming to analyze the company. You have industrial that they get a different point of view, this is clear. You have financial short terms, then they only look the short terms with the risky when you have an industrial company to make some big change when that I don't know how much is useful for the people and for everything. And then you have financial in the middle, long term, that they can give you like a bridge of the two. So also explaining the company to a different audience is a different approach. So you need to be more focused on the number and the performance and the future for somebody. You need to be focused on the intangible and the missing opportunity with the industrial that is something perhaps more close to my DNA, but I made both experience. So then I will let you know next step I will be. Mm. So it was, uh, was, was very, very peculiar because you see sometimes you are working all day, you don't make this evaluation. How is value the company, which is the plus points. When you have this point, it was difficult because you have to manage the company but the other 12 hours you have to sell and, and prepare the documents to sell the company. So it's a double job. But I like it. Now I can be more ready also to buy a company because when you sell a company, it's also a good experience if you want to buy because you, you try when you go to buy, if you make on the sales process, you can be on the other side of the table. Mm. I think it will be interesting. Mm. That's for sure. So you can kind of anticipate what needs to happen and, yeah. and everything that you need to know in order to make that decision. No, yeah. absolutely. And with the experience now, I mean, what, you know, what would you, what advice would you give someone else or like three pieces of advice would you give someone else who is embarking on kind of the same journey as you or, or even to your younger self? The first was already was moving very quick with audacity is, is the key mm -hmm. point to me. In all the segments, uh, car, technologies, go, 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 go. It means today is you cannot, don't be afraid, don't be stuck, because today you have much more to lose if you stay in one position that move it. So move it, move it is, is the point, sorry. And the other point is uh, try to take your time is difficult, eh? but try to get your time with your mind all the time to summarize what you are doing in a period of one week, one month, two months, three, more than three months is becoming dangerous. But let's try to stop it and be honest with yourself what you made of your intention, what you don't make. Who takes care if you don't make it? It's the next one for the next month. Mm -hmm. But try to be very honest to tell you and to take your time. Because I know everybody, most in this moment, was like a war. So you have, you have one problem every other. So you started with 25 problems in the morning, you end 35 in the night. So you already think, okay, next Monday will be another full week. <laughs> but you should find. I'm finding the night. I'm a night person. Mm. So I'm trying to get in the night and to move my mind and tell, okay, Ricardo, so what you made great, so you need to be honest. You need to be speedy, as I told you before, speedy, audacity. But if you don't have the time to judge yourself, <laughs> the risk is that you are against one wall and you discover when it's too late. Mm. And now that is the difficult point, you cannot do anything, everything by yourself, we know. You need to be the leader on everything if you want, if you are able to do it. Mm. But you need to give and to find people with your DNA, with the entrepreneur DNA, also not only manager. Uh, to, and this is, for me, the hardest uh, situation today of the company, is the mix between worker with no vision that you need it also, because without them you cannot make, but also worker then with vision. They also be your let me see, opposite sometimes, showing you that your choice is great or is not so great as you were thinking was. Mm. 
I think the idea of building a team and surrounding yourself with people who are transparent, who who share your values, but are different as well, who bring something else to the table is so critical because, you know, sometimes you don't see things that other people will see. I mean, what's what's the best <laughs> tips that you can give about building a great team? Man, I think the first uh, is to be direct and to share. So sometimes when we manage a company, we, we forgot to share idea, sensation. And if you get time to share, it's a good point because as you tell, not all the people, they are able to see 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. Neither me. But if you have, let me see, a wider angle, try to get a portion of this angle to them. Perhaps they are amazing in that angle because sometimes you get, can get surprised and uh, they only see 90 degrees, but if you give, give them the possibility to see 120, that 30, per, 30 will be the difference for everybody. So, mm -hmm. But if you don't share and you keep by yourself, uh, you don't know if the limit is yours that you don't share or them that they, they are not able to go there. Mm -hmm. So sharing also with different uh, people, uh, I love to do committee every month with many people from different departments. But is and, and they I know that they like it because I'm speaking about during the COVID, COVID situation, my vision, the future. Because they also need, as you tell before, a leader giving away for them, mm -hmm. giving a hope sometimes. Last year was a hope to tell, mm -hmm. okay, we are still here. But you know, this is a good point. This is a good point. And uh, but now we need that help as a, always as a company to find who is on the right uh, line and who is not on the right line. So we need the, is the moment of the price. We need to be more physical together. This is the reason that I told you, because you know when you pass like a big thunderstorm like this one, you need to try to put and try to recreate the homogeneous world of yourself and the company, because. Mm. You know, it's like a couple. Eh? I, I try to find this very... Hey, it's like a couple, then you have somebody going to live to America, the other one going to... Long-distance relationship. A yeah, long-distance relationship mm -hmm. that you find the balance, but it's not reality. And then when you join together, oh, finally, we got to live together, it's a disaster. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes happens. Also, to me, happens in the past. So I know mm -hmm. how... It, so you need to slowly, but to, to recreate the atmosphere of being a team it's not you have team a and team b but you don't have one and when you have two team message communication is a disaster and the ratio of the company will be unstable that it means that you are not efficient mm. i didn't think of of seeing this as a long distance relationship but that makes so much sense um i mean i'm in favor of having some flexibility but i think also. it needs to be a yeah and I think it's it's really important to feel some freedom, but I think you're right. I mean, just if everyone's working completely remotely and having that shared sense of purpose and being together and seeing the things that you don't necessarily see through the conversations on the phone or Zoom or whatever, you know, there's a lot that can be lost in those communications when you're not physically present. Um, so, yeah, so figuring it out of having some kind of a hybrid model for me is... Hybrid. Is hybrid is, mm. is a situation. But you know, when you come from, let me see, a smart working system, before reaching the hybrid, you need to try again the opposite of the smart working. If not, you don't find the balance. We'll be, we'll be a strange system. So you need, again, like to, okay, let's try to get one month together. We are coming from many months far. And then, from September, let's find the real hybrid situation where if you don't come some days, who take care? Mm -hmm. But on the other one, you have double energy to give to me and the people and to show that is one team, one company. Yeah, one team, one company. Love it. <laughs> mm. Well, Ricardo, thank you so much. Um, that's been fascinating speaking with you Gracias. and to get your thoughts on particularly kind of entrepreneurship and, you know, heritage brands getting into the modern world and how yeah how to kind of survive this very strange period of time and kind of keeping one step ahead and you know keeping that future and lots of different options in mind and um yeah thank you so much 
Quindi Grazie poi... Maria for your call and your trust. È un... Quindi audaci, eh? <laughs> yes, I'm going to remember that, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us here on Anatomy of a Leader. I hope our guest leadership journeys resonate with you and make you feel like you too can take on the world. Please subscribe so you can be alerted when new episodes are released. Comment, like, tell a friend, share on social media. I'll make sure to support you there as well. And let me know what inspired you, the changes that you've made, and how you too succeeded against all odds. You can find me on Instagram and LinkedIn with the handle Maria HVO, or just search for my very long surname. And if you're hiring leaders to take your business to the next level, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Again, that long surname. Thank you again for being here on Anatomy of a Leader. Bye for now. <laughs>